Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at the new weapon rules for Warhammer 40,000 10th edition. And this is another great update. I've got to say, this is really fun getting all these regular updates from the Warhammer community site. And it's really interesting to see how they've gone about changing the weapons. Let's have a look at the bolt rifle first. Now, usually we're used to seeing the weapons described as heavy, rapid fire, or assault. But now, these are going to become weapon abilities instead. And with the bolt rifle, we're going to see that change as it's going to have both the assault and the heavy abilities. Let's find out what this means exactly. And here you can see we've got an example of the bolt rifle. Let's have a look at the weapon's characteristics first. Here, you're going to be making two attacks. Ballistic skill, three plus. Strength, four. Armor piercing, minus one. And damage, one. You can see it's got the two abilities, Assault and Heavy. Let's have a look at what Assault means in the new 10th edition. It tells us that weapons with Assault in their profile are known as Assault Weapons. If a unit that advanced this turn contains any models equipped with Assault Weapons, it's still eligible to shoot in this turn's shooting phase. When such a unit is selected to shoot, you can only resolve attacks using Assault Weapons its models are equipped with. There's no penalty for using it, so that's really nice. So you can advance and shoot using the weapons characteristics that we just had a look at. But the bolt rifle now comes with the heavy ability and it says here that weapons with heavy in their profile are known as heavy weapons. Each time an attack is made with such a weapon, if the attacking models unit remains stationary this turn, you can add one to that attack's hit roll. Brilliant, this is great. So now we can actually increase the weapon characteristics and so the ballistic skill is gonna go down to a two plus if we don't move. I really like this, I think it's fantastic. There's no penalty for moving, shooting, advancing and shooting and if you stand still, you're gonna get a buff from that. I think it's great, this works out really nicely for my Imperial Fist, so I'm really happy with this change. They also mention in the article that because of this flexibility now, it, it doesn't really matter what rifles you give your Space Marines. And it didn't really matter before, unless you were playing WYSIWYG, it didn't really matter. But now you just give them bolt rifles, you can use whichever scopes you like, any magazines, it's all going to be the same bolt rifle with assault and heavy. The article does also say that the core rules will include a variety of other weapon abilities which tie together similar effects found across factions. So there could be more we can layer on this later. This actually feels like a big change to me, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. We've got another example to look at. This time it's the Terminator with the Assault Cannon. Let's have a look at the Assault Cannon then, and you can see it's got the Devastating Wounds ability. And this ability allows them to deal mortal wounds on a critical wound. And a critical wound is an unmodified wound roll of six. Let's have a closer look at this then with the weapons characteristic first. We've got the Assault Cannon, Devastating Wounds ability, range 24 inch. You're going to be making six attacks, Ballistic Skill 3 plus, Strength 6. My, uh, no AP, so that's just zero, and then you're going to deal one point of damage. But you've got this Devastated Wounds ability, and it says that weapons with Devastated Wounds in their profile are known as Devastating Wounds weapons. Each time an attack is made with such a weapon, a critical wound inflicts a number of mortal wounds on the target equal to the damage characteristic of that weapon, and then the attack sequence ends. So you're going to deal one point of damage for every critical wound and your opponent will not be able to roll any saves against it. Here's the one I was looking forward to seeing, the Melter Rifle, and you can see that this has got two abilities, Heavy and Melter 2. Now yesterday we saw the vehicles getting tougher, now we're going to see the weapons getting stronger. Let's find out and have a closer look at the Melter Rifle. So we'll get the weapon characteristics up first, and you can see this has got a range of 18 inch. You're going to make one attack, Ballistic skill 3 plus, strength is 9, armor piercing is minus 4, and damage is d6. It tells us that the weapons with Melter X in their profile are known as Melter weapons. Each time an attack made with such a weapon targets a unit within half that weapon's range, so within 9 inches, that attack's damage characteristic is increased by the amount denoted by X. So in this case it would be d6 plus 2. So a little increase in, in strength, but it doesn't feel all that different to what we're already used to, this one. Let me know what you think down below. I thought we might see more of a drastic change here, but it seems the bolt rifle got the biggest change so far. 
Still nice to have a strength 9, but check out what they're doing with the hammerhead. It tells us in the article, they don't show us any pictures or anything, but it says the railgun has now got strength 20, which is insane. And it even says at the bottom of the article that this isn't even the strongest gun. So we can expect to see higher strength weapons than strength 20, which is just crazy. I suppose, though, if you're going to be using this, you're definitely going after other tanks, other vehicles. And with the toughness increases in those, you've got to increase the strength of these weapons. So now is this going to really force you to be taking some of these bigger tanks in your army? I hope so, because it's great fun to see them on the table. This will also play into the idea and the thing they keep mentioning in the Games Workshop articles and on the online previews is that they're trying to get away from the idea that plasma can just take out everything, infantry, vehicles, all sorts. Now you're really going to have to go for some dedicated anti-tank units. All right, let's keep going. Next up, we've got the Shuriken Cannon, and this is going to have a sustained hits and ignores cover abilities. And you can see here for the Shuriken Cannon, you've got a range 24 inch, three attacks, ballistic skill three plus, strength six, armor piercing minus one, and it's going to do two damage. Let's see what sustained hits does. It tells us that weapons with sustained hits X in their profile are known as sustained hits weapons. Each time an attack is made with such a weapon, if a critical hit is rolled, that attack scores a number of additional hits on the target as denoted by X. That's pretty cool. So if you roll a six or for every six you roll when you make your attack rolls, if you get any sixes, in this case with sustained hits followed by one, you're going to make one additional hit on the target. And final example, we get to see some melee weapons as well, and that's going to come with the twin linked ability. And in the example here, the auto bolt storm gauntlets and power fists, they're both going to be twin linked here. So this is an old rule, apparently. Now, I haven't been playing for all that long, only a few years. So I don't remember this edition or the rule that this edition was in, but you might. And so that's pretty cool. It tells us that this is going to be found on ranged and melee weapons alike and it confers a re-roll to wound. The idea with this re-roll to wound now is coming away from the idea that any weapons that were twin linked were treated like two guns, and that may have felt a bit too much, maybe too many shots, but now this is gonna make it more reliable. Re-rolling those wounds is gonna give you more reliability than number of attacks, and I quite like that. Let's have a closer look though. Here we've got the auto bolt storm gauntlets, range 18 inch, Three attacks, ballistic skill three plus, strength four, no AP and one damage. Nice and straightforward. And then for the power fist, again, twin linked, melee, three attacks, weapon skill four plus, strength eight, nice, AP minus two and damage two. And so you've got three attacks, but you can re-roll all those wound rolls. So that's brilliant. Let's go through that twin linked real quick. Weapons with twin linked in their profile are known as twin linked weapons. Each time an attack is made with such a weapon, you can re-roll that attack's wound roll. There we go then, I quite like that. I think that's good. I almost prefer having the wounds to be re-rolled than having more attacks. But what do you think? Which would you prefer? Let me know in the comments down below. But that's it, that's the article. That's covered everything that was included in it. So we've got a nice update for some of the weapons now and there's still loads to find out. And we've gone through loads over the past few weeks. So if you'd like to check out those videos, I've gone through the vehicles, I've gone through the leader rules, all different things from building your army, looking at the data sheets, faction rules. There's so much to catch up with if you haven't seen it already. And all those videos will be available on my channel and I'll link to some of them at the end of this video as well as the playlist too. But what do you think about all these changes so far? I think it's great fun, but I'd love to hear your opinions and thoughts on what we've seen so far. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and it gave you a good idea about some of the changes you can expect for Warhammer 40,000 10th edition as far as the weapons are concerned. If you did like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this one, and I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping me keep going with these daily videos. I couldn't do this without you and thank you so much for your support. It's really awesome. And if you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks, there's a link down below. It'd be brilliant to see you there.